Hello and welcome to the Elmerone Fieldhouse in Memphis, Tennessee, on the campus of the University of Memphis. I'm Jeff Brightwell, and welcome to tonight's matchup between the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and the Memphis Tigers. A big game here tonight in the Elmerone Fieldhouse. So let's talk about the Golden Hurricane first. Tulsa is currently sitting at fifth at nine and six in the American. That's very important, as you know, here in about a week and a half. But Mohegan Sun and Uncansville, Connecticut, the top five teams in the American, earn a first round bye. They will not have to play. The the first day of the conference tournament. Matilda Bossman's team is led by a trio of double-digit scores, and let's start with a couple of junior guards, Kelsey Grovey and Ashley Clark. Clark currently in the top ten in both points and rebounding in the conference. You put those two along with the senior forward, Mariah Turner, a very dangerous combination for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. We flip over and take a look at Melissa McFerrin's Memphis Tigers, and they are fighting for their postseason lives tonight. Currently, they are seventh in the American at seven and eight, but overall 13 and 13. And with just three games left, they need to win two out of three to have that winning record going into the conference tournament and try to get into postseason this year. They're led by their junior class, and it's been outstanding. You talk about a first team all conference guard, Ariel Hearn, out of Arlington High School. Right now, fifth in the American in scoring, leading the Tigers in points per game. And they had a nice junior college transfer coming this year. The post player, Brianna Wright, has added some size and some defense as well as rebounding and right now she is third in the league in rebounding in the American Conference. The two teams have met once before January 10th in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Reynolds Center and Tulsa came away with a 79-69 win over the Memphis Tigers. Tulsa got 25 points forcing 14 Memphis turnovers and they spread the ball around very well. Five players in double figures for Matilda Mossman's ball club that ball game. So it's the Tulsa Golden Hurricane and the Memphis Tigers fighting for postseason and conference seating coming your way next on the American Digital Network. Well, a lot on the line, as we just talked about here tonight, and the Tulsa Golden Hurricane with their lineup, and they're going to kind of run a four-guard. Those fours are going to be small forwards with that post player, Mariah Turner. Caden Brady, Kelsey Grovey, Ashley Hughes, Tiana Reed will be outside. Mariah Turner will play that hybrid center forward position for the Matilda Mossman's ball club. And Mariah Turner, one of the best uh, shooters in the league, 51.3% from the field this year, averaging 12 points, 5 rebounds. She's one of the trio of those double-digit scores. We talked about Ashley Clark in the pregame. She's been coming off the bench. We'll hear more from Matilda Mossman a little bit later in the broadcast about that switch. But Clark, who now comes off the bench, actually their leading scorer and leading rebounder. So that's the lineup tonight for Matilda Mossman's Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Now Melissa McFerrin's Memphis Tigers out top. The, one of the best scorers in the league, Ariel Hearn out of Arlington High School in the Memphis area. Next to her, an all-freshman selection a year ago, Mariah Rouser, the Fords, Taylor Williams, Brianna Wright, Asia Fuqua Bay. So they've got a nice combo down at the post of Asia Fuqua Bay and Brianna Wright. And Taylor Williams has really started to come on here late in her sophomore season. And if they can get Mariah Rouser playing well tonight, Get her in the scoring groove. Kind of been up a little bit down at times. And Mariah Rouser's hitting. This Memphis team is very, very dangerous. They're eighth in the league in the offense, but very capable of putting a lot of points on the board as Melissa McFerrin's ball club trying to win tonight. Almost a must-win situation for Memphis. Their last three games tonight against Tulsa, they've got to go to top-ranked UConn on Saturday. They host SMU here Monday night. And Matilda Mossman's Tulsa Golden Hurricane at 14-12. A little bit more leeway at two games over 500, but a win tonight on the road for the Golden Hurricane would be very big as they sit at 9-6, and six, fifth in the league. Again, the top five in the 11-team American Conference do not have to play on the first day next weekend up at Mohegan Sun. Memphis, a loss tonight, puts them as the seventh seed. A win tonight for Melissa McFerrin's Tigers. Could put them at six, potentially as high as a fifth C, but they would have to win some tiebreakers and get a little bit of help in that aspect. 
Nice crowd continuing to come in here to the El Marone Fieldhouse. Just a couple of home games left, including the final game Monday night, which will not be senior night because the Memphis Ball Club does not have a senior on the team. So some high expectations for next year and hoping to finish strong this year with three games to go. So we welcome you in here as Tulsa will be in their road blues, trimmed in the gold. Memphis will be in their home white tonight, trimmed in the tiger blue and the tiger gray here in the historic El Marone Fieldhouse on the campus of the University of Memphis. It's a venerable uh, older arena, home of uh, women's basketball and tiger volleyball here at the University of Memphis. And their faithful fans uh, continuing to show up here tonight. It's been chilly. Uh, to say the least, with ice coming through the last few weeks, uh, not only in the southeast but the Midwest, but glad to have him in here tonight. We are ready to go for the Elmerone Fieldhouse, and it will be Mariah Turner taking the jump for Tulsa. She'll go up against Brianna Wright for the Memphis Tigers. Brian Interline, Eric Koch, and Polani Spurlock, our officials here this evening at the El Marone Fieldhouse. And yeah, the tip's going to get deflected out of bounds. And let's see who uh, touched that. Looks like it's going to be Brianna Wright that tipped it. So the Golden Hurricane of Tulsa will see Matilda Bossman's ball club on offense for the first time. And they will have the sideline in bounds, as will be Caden Brady, the senior out of Helton, Oklahoma, to inbound it. So we'll see what Tulsa has. They move the ball around very well. They are second in the league in assist at 14.7. They are 63rd overall in the NCAA, and that's over well over 300 1A teams, and they are 63rd. As you see the ball movement very well already as Reed will kick it out. They'll go to the far corner for the three. It'll bank high, and there is one of the better rebounders in the league, Brianna Wright. She is third in the American as the Tigers will get it into the post quickly for Fuqua Bay. Made a nice little step that time, couldn't follow on the layup. And Tulsa now will be back on offense. So Memphis opting for the quick shot. Here's Grovey from the right side. And the junior out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Had a nice game against Memphis back on January 10th. She had 19.6 rebounds in the ball game at the Reynolds Center. So now the Tigers out along the left wing. And that's the sophomore, Williams. Looks for a screen not there. Now that's Ariel Hearn. One of the best in the American. Fifth in scoring, eighth in assists. She is fifth in steals. Kicks it out to Rouser in the corner, trying to drive baseline. Wasn't there. Nice baseline pass to Williams as they reverse it back to Taylor in the right corner. Two on the shot clock before it got kicked out of bounds with 18.43. And the kick basketball will give it to Memphis on the baseline. That resets the shot clock to 15. So a little time to work here for the Tigers as Hearn, the all-conference guard out of Arlington High School in the Memphis area, will bring it in. Tigers trying to free up. They'll go to right on the left block. Her jumper is short. Never got a lot on that. Was in the air. Just never able to plan and get anything on it. Clanks it off the side of the rim. So Tulsa out. One for two from the field. Memphis has missed both of their field goals early. Now the Tigers are going to try to ramp up the pressure at half court. Tulsa able to get it across into the right corner. Back up the wing to Hughes out of Sulphur, Oklahoma. They go to the free throw line, now back out to Grovey, the junior, out of Shawnee, Oklahoma. Played in 27, uh, started 27 of 28 games a year ago. This is a foul along the baseline. Looks like it's going to be Ariel Hearn. And that's been a problem here and there. has been foul trouble for Melissa McFerrin's Tigers. They've got to keep Hearn out of foul trouble. And she's already picked up an early. And Melissa McFerrin's been making some early switches, even with one foul. Nice inbound pass. They find Caden Brady from the left block in Tulsa with a quick 4-0 lead here, nearly two minutes into the ball game. Rouser trying to work over to the top. Couldn't get around Tiana Reed. Reed picks up the steal in the open court with a layup, and Tulsa out to a 6-0 lead here in Memphis. Hearn will slam on the break. She calls the play. She comes across midcourt. Between the rings will match up that time with Reed again. Goes the elbow to Fuqua Bay. Tried to ride the free throw line. They'll get it back to Hearn for a catch and shoot three. And that's the big time player. First team all conference, Ariel Hearn is 16.3 points a game, 34% from the arc, 39% from the field. And she can carry the ball club on several occasions so far this year. Groby back up high. They'll reverse it out in the left corner. That is Brady. She'll drive in, tries the finger roll, but is fouled by Brianna Wright. And Already Memphis has 
Hearn with one, Brianna Wright with one. They played just two minutes and 41 seconds, and two of their key players with early fouls. And Melissa McFerrin got her team together. Here is Caden Brady, the senior guard at a held in Oklahoma, 75.6%. She came off the bench against Memphis in the prior matchup, 13 points and three rebounds, and the first is on the way in good. It's also right now an even 70% from the free throw line. That is fifth in the American. And she gets set again. Memphis coming off a close loss Saturday, 75-65 at Tulane. Tulsa had to face number one UConn, lost 92-46. So there's the first switch. See Cheyenne Creighton, who made the honor roll in the American this week, checked in for... Brianna Wright. So that's the quick move already by Melissa McFerrin to try to stay out of too much foul trouble early in the game. So two for two at the line, and Tulsa with an 8-3 lead. Five-point advantage for the Golden Hurricane. Fuqua Bay out high back to Williams. She'll take the catch and shoot three rolls over the rim, and Creighton fresh off the bench. The offensive rebound couldn't get the put back, but there's Rouser. Her shot a little bit short, tries for a third time, and it rattles in. So Memphis pulls to within three. Tulsa back on offense. They've hit their last three field goals. They are three for four. Uh, and that's Brady out on the left arc. Back up high to Groby. Sends it to the right side reach. He's picked up by Mariah Rouser. 14 on the shot clock for the Golden Hurricane. Bounce pass up to Brady. See what Matilda Mossman's ball club has. Brady, a nice move going baseline. Wide open three from the left corner, and it's Ashley Hughes out of Sulphur, Oklahoma. She shoots 42% from the arc. Tulsa back out to that six-point lead. Eagles the largest lead early in the ball game. 11-5, Golden Hurricane. Dead ball by Rouser. Goes to the post, and Fuqua Bay had the ball knocked away out of her hands. Going to stay with the Tigers on the jump ball. So 16-11 remaining in the opening half, 17 on the shot clock. Baseline inbound to our left, and it will be Hearn to bring it in for the Tigers. Out to Williams, catch and shoot. The jumper from the wing is good for the sophomore out of Kansas City, Kansas, and Bishop Ward High School. So Taylor Williams pulls Memphis to within four. Under 16 minutes to go in the half. Now Hughes looking down low, throws it out of bounds, deflected, and that gets us to the first media timeout. 15.56 remaining here in the opening half of play, 11-7. Tulsa and earlier we caught up with Memphis head coach Melissa McFerrin. Coach, no disguising what's at stake in this ball game here tonight with you and Tulsa. Tulsa. Both teams not just playing for conference seating, but really postseason hopes are on the line. We are, and Tulsa has a slight edge in that department because, of course, they won the first game at their place. But we're excited. Our team, I feel like, is playing well. I think we've matured since that point. Um, we've got a great energy right now and a great focus. We've talked about all year long that our young team really needs to begin to understand a, a sense of urgency that a veteran team would, and I think we're getting to that point led by Ariel Hearn. Lost that first game to Tulsa. It was a close game. It was only a 10-point ball game. You had the lead early. They were able to take the lead and kind of control the pace of the second half. They did. We were very disappointed in our effort. We had just come off of a great UCF game. Felt like we showed up at Tulsa without a great sense of urgency, kind of tried to walk through that game without giving it a really solid effort. But take no credit away from Tulsa. Uh, maybe at that point in time we felt like it was a little bit of a bad loss on the road, but they've proven that they're a good basketball team. All right, let's talk about your all-conference guard, Ariel Hearn. We've seen her really grow over the last uh, three years. She was a first-team all-conference performer a year ago, and this year making the jump to really take that maturity and relish that leadership role. Ariel used to be the player that was the happy-go-lucky, and, and we all loved her for it, but at times she didn't really want the responsibility to lead this team. She has now become our emotional leader. She's our competitive leader. She's the one that makes sure and checks in that everybody's okay. She creates shots for other people. She's really beginning to understand what it means to be a team leader. And I'll tell you what, she's a pretty good player. Thanks a lot, Coach. Thanks, Jeff. Well, wow, Melissa McFerrin's right there, the head coach of the Memphis Tigers in her seventh year. Took over a program seven years ago, really struggling, and they're trying to get back to the postseason. She ran off four straight postseasons, missed last year, trying to get back here this year. And again, that's how big this game is for Memphis. So Tulsa with an 11-7 lead. They get it up to the perimeter. Grovey reverses it out to the right arc read. Tulsa right now shooting four of five from the field. Memphis three of eight. Four on the shot clock, fade away. Air balls it long, and Fuqua Bay will come away with it. Quick outlet pass out to Hearn. 
acceleration from the junior guard will miss, but she'll go to the line as Tulsa is going to pick up their first foul. And it looks like it's going to be Kelsey Grovey, her first foul of the ball game. So that'll put Hearn, the junior out of Memphis, Tennessee. Not only is she one of the best scorers, best distributors of the basketball, best ball stealers, she also has logged a lot of minutes. She is fourth in the league in minutes played, nearly 34 minutes a game on the season. Melissa McFerrin, late this year now, the last month or so, has had to start limiting her reps in practice, make sure she's got fresh legs for the ball game. 11-8, and Hearn can pull Memphis to within two. A little short, but takes the Tiger roll in. So Memphis, who's trailed by as many as six, has pulled back to within two. With a little over 15 minutes remaining in the opening half, it also comes right back on the right side, and a nice shot off the block as Mariah Turner banks it off the glass. Senior out of Norman, Oklahoma, who's eighth in field goal percentage. And here's Mariah Rouser from the right arc. If Rouser gets going, Memphis is very hard to handle. And Rouser early on gets the three-pointer. So just a one-point game, and we've got a good one going on early here in Memphis. We thought we would. To the right arc as Reed comes back up high. Nice job by Rouser to work under the screen as Tulsa works the perimeter. Screen and a nice slip screen. The shot off of Fuqua Bay, and that was Mariah Turner trying to make the run down the left side of the lane. The 6'2 senior runs right into the 6'1 junior from Memphis, lost the basketball. Six on the shot clock for the Golden Hurricane. Bounce pass. They tried that block again, and this time it's her who gets the steal. Leaves it for Fuqua Bay in the layup. It's part of that junior class from Memphis. Hearn out of Memphis, Tennessee, and Fuqua Bay from Chicago, Illinois. To the right side is Clark for Tulsa. Dead ball sends it back up high now to Reed. Reed will set the offense. They'll flatten it out along the baseline now come up. Setting the screen that time was Ashley Clark. Clark off the bench this year, 14 points, 7.5 rebounds. Top 10 in each category in the American, but turns it over this time. Rouser outlet pass to Hearn. Hearn leans in, the jumper is good, and Memphis will have their first lead out the ball game. Tigers four for their last four right now, and they lead it over Tulsa. And now timeout called by Matilda Mossman as she has seen Memphis really come on. Memphis a 7-0 run over the last minute 15. They're five of their last five. These two teams shooting very well, combined 11 of 18 the field for both teams. Memphis 6 of 11 and Tulsa 5 of 7 as you see Hearn break out into the front court on the turnover leans in and knocks it down and Hearn already despite picking up the early foul 7 points, 3 rebounds for the junior guard. Last time the two teams met Hearn had 17 points, 6 rebounds against Tulsa. Her career high is 30 and she's put up into the upper 20s several times. Hearn who was first team a year ago Trying to make her mark for first team again. She's been on the honor roll three times, and that's all been in conference play January 5th, January 26th, February 2nd, the most recent time. Now Matilda Bossman there in her fourth year with Tulsa, 56 and 60, took over a team that was struggling, led to a conference championship in 2012. Her Tulsa team that year went four for four in that conference tournament, winning all four days in a row to get the automatic bid. And boy, they've had some success here in the American in their first year trying to get a first round by in the conference tournament at nine and six in the league. So Tulsa has the ball out of the timeout. They look to the free throw line to Clark. Clark stops in the lane, moves it out to the perimeter on the left wing. Hughes will back it up, goes high to Reed. Reed to the right, seven on the shot clock. Nice pass into the left corner. And Kelsey Grovey, a three pointer. She shoots nearly 33% from the arc and Grovey now with five points early on in the first six and a half minutes and another turnover and here come the Golden Hurricane. It's Grovey leading the charge. Quick pass to Reed for another three. He rattles around, not gonna go. Controlled, no, not controlled. As Fuqua Bay couldn't get a handle on it and it goes out of bounds her foot came along the baseline. So tied at 16 now at 13-19. Baseline inbound, quick along the baseline to Clark, backing away in reverse layup as she'll go down hard, and Fuqua Bay will draw her first. So right now the Tigers have fouls, three fouls, right Fuqua Bay and Hearn. 
No real trouble for Tulsa. Just one foul that right now is on Kelsey Grovey. So that will put Ashley Clark, the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma, was player of the week February 2nd in the American to the line. First one rattled in and out, 67.4% from the line. We'll see. Amber Holmes come in. Memphis going with a little bit smaller lineup here. She'll check in for Fuqua Bay. We see Caden Brady come back in for Tulsa. She'll replace Ashley Hughes. Clark second on the way is good. So Clark puts Tulsa back up. Here is Hurd out to the right wing. Finds Williams breaking up high. Left side, Rouser. Rouser looking down low. Nothing there. Now Tulsa starting to clog up the... Paint. So Rouser will take it herself. Leans in from eight. High off the back iron. Tipped out of bounds. Looked like it went off Mariah Turner. So it'll stay with Memphis. Tigers get a fresh 30 on the clock with 12.56 to go here in the opening half. There is Amber Holmes, the 5'7 freshman. Another local product out of Overton High School, which is only a couple of miles away from the Elmer Field Fieldhouse. Holmes has it to the left side. And Holmes, the freshman, has really started to come on the last four weeks. Has become more and more comfortable with Melissa McFerrin's offense and confident in what she can do. Here is Rouser, right elbow, got a little off balance, leans in, couldn't get the bucket to go. That'll give it back to Turner and Tulsa. Clark to the right side, long pass into the corner to Grovey, drives baseline, leaves it in the lane. Nice ball movement as Ashley Clark will finish it off. So Tulsa goes back on top, 19-16, and Hearn to the left elbow. Trying to drive, they get it to Rouser. Rouser for another three. This one rolls over the back iron, and Caden Brady has the ball. Brady to the far sideline, stops, goes onto the wing to Reed. Reed looks in, nothing there. Plenty of time, 20 on the shot clock. They'll go to the post, left block off the glass. Nice feed. Good job by Mariah Turner there to let the defender go by and then bank it off the glass. Memphis got a brief lead, but now Tulsa starting to run again. An 8-0 run over the last 121 for Tulsa. And they lead it by 5, 21-16. Hearn to the left arc, being picked up this time by Tiana Reed. Flashing up high is Rouser. Rouser looks to the right side. They'll go to the post, then throw it over the head of Shy and Creighton. That brings us to the under 12-minute media timeout. 11.34 to go in the half. Tulsa leads at 21-16. Earlier, we caught up with Tulsa head coach Matilda Mossman. Coach, first year in the American Conference, sitting at 9-6, and six, a chance to get a first-round bye in the conference tournament. You guys have made the transition into this conference very well. How do you like the American? Well, I like it a lot. Uh, in fact, when the preseason rankings came out and they had us ranked ninth, uh, you know, I think that uh, put a little chip on some of our players' shoulders because they didn't feel like uh, we were a ninth-place team. So here we are sitting, as you said, in, in, a, in a position to be a top seed and not have to play that first round of the tournament, and I think that's pretty important. Of course, that puts a lot of importance on this ball game with Memphis here tonight and this little stretch run. This regular season ends on Monday. Yeah, we've got three games left, two on the road and our one at home, and this one looms as the most important because uh, us or Memphis could finish anywhere between, uh, us for any way, we could finish anywhere between third and seventh. So uh, I, I know it's important to both teams. Tell me a little bit about Ashley Clark made the decision that, hey, I feel a little more comfortable maybe coming off the bench, and she's responded well. She's in the top ten in scoring and rebounding. Well, initially it happened because just we were trying to get just change the lineups a little bit to get more energy at the start of a game, uh, and, and it just so happened the kid that took Ashley's place was the kid that was giving us the most energy in Ashley Hughes. And then all of a sudden Ashley Clark is playing so well off the bench, we decided not to make any changes, just keep doing that. And I think it's helped Ashley to be able to just get, kind of get into the flow of the game, see what's happening a little bit, and then because when she comes into the game, she can make things happen pretty quickly. Thanks a lot, Coach. All right, thank you. Well, the Memphis Tigers grabbed a three-point lead, but there's Matilda Mossman. She likes what she sees now. Her team on an 8-0 run over the last 147. They've hit four of their last five field goals. You talk about moving the ball around, how they are one of the best in the league. In fact, second in assists. Right now, everyone that's been in the game has scored. Grovey with five, Turner and Brady with four each, Clark with three, Reed with two, Hughes with three, and Melissa McFerrin there. Looking to see her team try to reverse the trend here, get a run going on of their own as Reed sends it off to the left elbow. Turning as Clark, try to drive the lane. She's cut off. 17 on the shot clock for Tulsa as Reed out to the right arc. Back along the wing now is Brady, matched up with Amber Holmes. Goes top of the key again. Here's Groby between the circles. Seven on the shot clock for Tulsa. Groby tried to make a move. Dead ball. She ran into Hearn. Three, the spin move. Reed at the buzzer, partially deflected. 
But it's going to be a shot clock violation nonetheless, and that will turn it over and give it to the Memphis Tigers. Nice defensive stand by Memphis. Now they've got to get something going on offense. A scoring drive right now of two minutes and 34 seconds. And they've made some stops on defense, but now need to find some points on offense. Here's Hearn out to the left wing. Hearn stops. Three-pointer is good. Big-time player, and it hits the three-pointer there. And Ariel Hearn now, her second three of the game already with 10 points in the contest. Gives it to Groby up high. Swings it to Reed now. Right corner is Clark. Finds Brady. She wants to try to return the three. Couldn't get it into the hands of Reed. And this could be very hurtful for Memphis. If that's going to be on Ariel Hearn, it's going to be her second as Melissa McFerrin looks around. And they are fortunate. That's going to be on Amber Holmes, her first, the freshman out of Memphis, Tennessee. So Hearn still with just the one foul. They need her in there. She's got a hot hand tonight with 10 points already. Braden slips it down to Turner on the baseline. Nice move. Got around the defender. Rattles it in. So Tulsa is built up again. A four-point lead here. Just over 10 minutes to go in the first half. Where's Rouser, Rouser never saw Clark coming, so Clark, our 35th steal of the year, in the open court, gets the layup. 25-19, the lead again is six. That Eagles, the biggest lead of the game for Matilda Mossman's Golden Hurricane. Rouser to the right side, couldn't take the Tiger roll that time out of bounds, gives it back to Tulsa. Three turnovers the last three minutes and 16 seconds right now for Memphis. As they'll get Bria Elmore in for Amber Holmes. And Tulsa will get Tiana Reed off the floor right now. Erica Wakefield, a freshman out of Moore, Oklahoma, and Heritage Hall High School comes in, stands 5-4. At Heritage Hall, was outstanding with over 1,800 points. So Rouser off the floor as well for Memphis. And Memphis will try to go a little bit bigger as they get Fuqua Bay back in the game with Creighton down low. Slicing down the lane, nothing there for Wakefield. Has to kick it back up. Pass bobbled. Fuqua Bay and Clark on the floor. Jump ball. Possession sticking with Tulsa. So a six-point lead for the Golden Hurricane. 9.38 left in the first half. Sideline inbound for Caden Brady. And they'll bring on her down toward the corner. As you look at the replay here, try to get it back out of the Clark, but Fuqua Bay able to stand and wrestle for the basketball. And Tulsa has the alternating possession. Nine on the shot clock as they get it back outside to Brady. To the left elbow, down to four. Right art, catch and shoot three by Clark. Nothing but net for the junior out of Midwest City, Oklahoma. And Clark with eight points already. So Hearn with Memphis going back and forth with Clark. Memphis won for the last five, needing some points. Elmore gets the defender there. No look pass to Creighton. Puts it on the floor, goes up strong, and she is fouled. She'll go to the free throw line. 7-0 run over the last 117. 15-3 run for Tulsa over the last 417. These free throws big here for Memphis, trying to stem some of the momentum that they have. Cheyenne Creighton was on the honor roll this week. Nice outing last week against UCF. Had an 8.2 rebound performance against Tulsa the first time. Had 10.4 rebounds down at Tulane as Creighton. Just a freshman. If you look at that physical body, goes up. She can power her way up. Cheyenne's really become a lot more comfortable. Big into her strength and fitness and has realized now late in the season that, hey, maybe a freshman, but I'm as strong as a lot of these juniors and seniors in the league. And, She's going to be a big rebounding, big defensive force for Melissa McFerrin in the years to come as Cheyenne Creighton right there now coming off the floor to get a breather. They'll get Brianna Wright, the junior college transfer, back into the ball game. So here's Tulsa up high. They lead it by eight to the right elbow. Trying to back their way in. Not there. They'll go free throw line looking for the jumper and a travel at the elbow by Mariah Turner. For Tulsa, that's just the third turnover of the ball game. Only four for Memphis, so the turnovers have been low in the ball game. Eight-point lead for the Golden Hurricane. They get it to Williams, and she's fouled on the sideline that time. Ashley Clark got into her. That'll be the first on Clark, just the third team foul. Only seven total fouls in the first half. So Memphis, one of their last five here on offense. You know, look forward to get the ball there to Ariel Hearn. Now to Elmore right side. Comes off a screen free throw line to Williams. There is Hearn. 
Left corner, couldn't get the three, and Tulsa has the rebound in the far corner. Baseball pass all the way to Brady, puts it on the floor, couldn't finish on the layup. Got a little too quick that time, and here come the Tigers. That is Hearn, free throw line jumper, and the junior leans over, but the ball rolls off to the right side, and back comes Tulsa, and the pace of the game starting to pick up, up and down the floor. Brady has it now, just off to the left side. 19 on the shot clock here for the Golden Hurricane. Left wing is Webster. Webster feeding the post. Nice shot by Fuqua Bay. Tipped it away into the hands of Elmore. The Tigers bringing it up the left side. Elmore stops on the arc. Dead ball to right. Once the reversal finds Williams right sideline quickly. Fuqua Bay but dribbled off her leg and out of bounds. And that gets us to the under eight minute media timeout. 7.49 remaining in the half. Tulsa leads at 28-20 here in Memphis. Back after this on the American Digital Network. The University of Tulsa a nationally ranked private university. There's more to a university than its name, something not found in any book or catalog. It's a certain beat, a signature rhythm not seen or heard but felt. From moments of illumination to those of discovery. From the world's smallest stage to the biggest. At the University of Memphis, we've found a beat all our own. Find yours. Well, the fans loving it today. That's one of the regular ones in Memphis. And they call him Bluebeard for obvious reasons. And you see him at every home game at Memphis. The fans, though, including uh, Bluebeard there, would like to see his Tigers get on a little bit of a run here as we get a look at some of the Tiger plays. Here is Ariel Hearn, the all-conference guard, out and running in transition. That's what she does best. She can put this team on her shoulders. There she does, cutting out to the left and knocking down the three. And back comes Tulsa with the steal. And the bucket from the right side is Ashley Clark. She was player of the week once this year. And Tulsa will work it from the outside as well. Right now, it's the Ashley Clark and the Ariel Hearn show here at the El Maron Fieldhouse in Memphis, Tennessee. So it'll be Tulsa basketball. Memphis lays back in the half-court offense or defense as they will meet Tulsa coming across midcourt. Out of on the left wing, now right side is Webster. Webster looking down low, cuts back just into the lane. 17 on the shot clock for Tulsa, dead ball for Reed. Reed trying to work to the post that time. Turner was forced out. Goes back in to Wakefield. Wakefield able to force her way up and get the bucket. And now Tulsa is open up a double-digit lead. This is the biggest lead of the game for the Golden Hurricane. 7-18 remaining in the first half. And Tulsa up 30-20. to And Memphis trying to get something going. And they do it right there. Into Fuqua Bay. And Asia Fuqua Bay out of Chicago, Illinois. Averaging 8.7 rebounds a game. Had an 18-point game at Tulsa earlier this year. Right side is Webster, and Tulsa responds. Antoinette Webster out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Five of the last six for Tulsa on offense, and they lead Memphis by 11. Out to the left side is Elmore. Gets the screen that time from Fuqua Bay. Holmes right sideline comes across the floor to Hearn. See Tulsa, looks like they're running a 2-3 here. Holmes out to the right arc. Feeds it to right. Brianna Wright tried to baby hook. Left that one a little bit short. And so Tulsa out to the right side. Pass a little bit ahead of Wakefield, but catches up with it. So Tulsa will set things up. Again, they move the ball so well around the perimeter on offense. That's a good ball movement. Again, second in the league in assists. at 63rd in the NCAA. Nearly 15 assists a game for Matilda Mossman's ball club. Out to the right side is Wakefield. Eight on the shot clock for Tulsa. They'll fake left, go right. In air, and that's a nice defensive play that time. Elmore got a piece of it, and Hearn comes away with the basketball. Hearn out to the right arc, finds Elmore straight away. Left wing to Holmes. Holmes goes high to Fuqua Bay on the elbow. It looked like they're trying to find Hearn in that corner as Elmore handles it right now. Comes off a screen. Stops, they'll go to Hearn. They get her open. Now look for three off the iron. 
Ball tipped by Wright, but Tulsa comes away with it. Reed in the right corner now makes it up the middle of the floor defended by Holmes. Reed to the right wing, maintaining the dribble. Tulsa, again, with the 11-point lead with about five and a half minutes to go. Down to 16 on the shot clock as Tulsa sets the offense. will attack the post that time. Brianna Wright knocks it away into the hands of Elmore. Splits two defenders, but it's knocked away from behind as it rolls out of bounds. And so the Tigers will have the ball of 26 on the shot clock. Taylor Williams, Mariah Rouser checking back in for Elmore and Holmes. And the Tigers really needing to get the shooting going here. Just two of their last ten now. Only down 11, though. And can get right back in this thing with 5.19 left in the first half. Plenty of time for the Tigers to regain some momentum. Tulsa controlling things. That's what Tulsa did, especially late in the first half in Tulsa at the Reynolds Center. Got the lead and kind of controlled the pace of the game. Here is Williams for three. It's going to be left short. Ball loose on the floor, and it's going to be Erica Wakefield who comes away with it. Wakefield looks ahead. Out along the left sideline is Reed. Reed accelerate, runs right into Fuqua Bay. Hearn and Fuqua Bay there, but it looks like Asia Fuqua Bay will pick up the foul. That's going to be her second foul. Six-team foul on Memphis. So the first player for the Tigers really to be in some kind of foul trouble. It's going to be the second on Fuqua Bay. And, excuse me, just the fifth-team foul right now on the Tigers. As Tiana Reed will go to the line, 72.1%. Right now, we talked about her three-point shooting is the first is good. Third in the league at 44.6%. Right now, that stands to be the single-season record. As you go up that time in Fuqua Bay, the hard contact that puts her to the line. But Tiana Reed's three-point percentage right now could stand to be the single-season record at Tulsa. Played a year at Butler Community College and helped Butler to a 34-3 record before coming to play for the Golden Hurricane. Tigers had it on the left side. Catch and shoot. Rouser inside the arc. Rouser moving to her left a little off balance. is a sweet stroke out there. And that may get Memphis going. We will see over the next 441. Wakefield bounce pass over to Reed as Reed looks up high. Getting it back to Webster. Nearly a backcourt violation. Able to catch up to it. Drives right side of the lane, finds the double team off the rim. That ball poked outside, so here's the follow by Reed high off the back iron. And Wright will have it out to Hearn on the outlet pass. Hearn will look at four blue jerseys ahead of her, decides to slow down, reset the offense of 20 on the shot clock. Arouse her to the left side. Free throw line pass is tipped into the hands of Williams. Williams looks inside with 11 on the shot clock. Here is the baseline. They'll go to right, trying to show some range. Fades away, rattles in and out, no good. Under four minutes to go to the right wing is Wakefield. Stops to the left arc. Coming in, floats it out to Webster. Tulsa steadily controlling things now, keeping that double-digit lead in a travel as Wakefield picked up her pivot foot. That'll bring us to the under four-minute media timeout. 3.47 to go. Tulsa still leads 34-24 at Memphis on the American Digital Network. This live broadcast brought to you by Live View Sports, the leader in turnkey live video production for sports, powering digital sports networks, live game production, and transmission. Visit Live View Sports at liveview.tv. Taking a look at the conference standings, and UConn, after beating South Carolina a couple of weeks ago, now back to number one in the nation and number one in the league at 16 0, 27 1, followed by USF and Tulane. The Bulls 13-2 and, and Tulane at 11-6, looking for potential at-large bids in the NCAA. East Carolina firm in the uh, at least the WNIT at 19-8, and eight. so you're talking four postseason play, uh, teams right there. Tulsa at 14-12, and 9-6 and six in the league, Temple at 9-6, and six, Memphis at 7-8, and 13-13. And Those three teams need strong finishes to try to get into some postseason play. UCF at 4 and 11, Cincinnati 3 and 12, follow up by SMU and Houston. But you see UConn, USF, Tulane, East Carolina, and Tulsa in Temple tied. Those six teams 
vying for the top five spots to get the first round by and don't have to play. Not really a buy. You're going to play all the games. You just don't play on the first day. You would only have to play three games instead of four as seeds six through 11 play on day one up at Mohegan Sun. That's just about a week and a half away up in Unkinsville. Should be another good tournament for the American Conference. Here is Rouser trapped in the backcourt. They don't get the 10 seconds where they get the travel on the turnover. And for Memphis, that's going to be turnover number six of the ball game. 34-24, a 10-point lead here for the Golden Hurricane. And again, Clark leading the way with eight for Tulsa. Hearn leading the way with 10 for the Tigers. Six turnovers each right now for these ball clubs as Clark gets it out to the left wing. Yeah, it's going to be Hughes. Hughes sends it back up high to Reed against Rouser. Rouser goes to the right, and she blows past Rouser. Couldn't finish the layup. And there's Hearn with the rebound. Hearn pretty good for a guard to get in there. Four and a half rebounds the game as Hearn comes out to the left wing. Finds right again over to Williams on the arc. Williams will be picked up by Ashley Hughes. Feeds it to the top of the key. It's Hearn again. 14 on the shot clock, under three minutes to go first half. Memphis really needing to get something going here, get some momentum going into the locker room. They trail by 10. Rouser drops it off the Hearn, passes up the three, comes in the arc. That's going to be short off the hand and rebounded by Reed. Reed sends it ahead, and the layup going to be stripped out of the hands by Hearn, looking for Ashley Hughes that time. It's going to be baseline inbound. Under the bucket, far side of the goal, is Hearn able to get the deflection that time. So here is Reed. Bounce pass into the corner to Webster. They'll work it around the perimeter again. Cuts to the left, leans in, banks it off the glass, no good, and Brianna Wright's got it for Memphis. Out to Hearn. They don't have the numbers. They'll go long to Williams. 2.26 to go in the first half as Hearn has it out to the right wing. Quickly into Cheyenne Creighton as Creighton backs her way in. She is in right now for Fuqua Bay. So you've got two pretty physical posts down low in Creighton and Brianna Wright. Let's see if Memphis is able to take advantage of it. Creighton, as you see there, has a little range, can pull it out. She'll shoot a few threes. Nice offensive rebound, but Taylor Williams couldn't get the follow. So two minutes to go, and the struggles from the field continue for Memphis. On the opposite end, same old Ashley Clark goes up hard and gets the bank off the glass to go. And it looks like Melissa McFerrin wanting the timeout as Matilda Mossman will get her team together right there. And the Golden Hurricane up by 12, and Melissa McFerrin addressing things now away from the bench. She wanted to get one of her 30s. Have not scored in the last three minutes of the ball game. As we look to Clark again, nice move to get around Williams and right there. Didn't have a lot of room to maneuver, but able to find uh, the little seam. Frustrating thing for Melissa McFair and her team has held Tulsa to this one for seven in their last seven possessions, but Memphis just not able to get anything going offensively. If they can get something going offensively, they can get right back into this ball game, trailing by 12 with under two minutes to go. It's also making it pretty difficult right now, the Tigers. And you can see the frustration right there on Melissa McFerrin's face. No switches made in that timeout for the Tigers as Ariel Hearn will call the play and come across midcourt. Between the circles, matched up with Tiana Reed, finds Rouser. 19 on the shot clock for the Tigers, out to Hearn left wing. Really covered hard by Tiana Reed. They're not going to let Hearn get free. Rouser on the right wing, down to nine. Rouser trying to drive, cut off by Clark. Creighton on the left arc. She'll drive to the free throw line. Williams, head fake, goes to the elbow. Three on the shot clock. Jumper good by Tater Williams. That'll break the scoring drought. The Tigers back to within 10 with a minute 21 remaining in the half. Clark out to the right arc. Clark stop, goes up high again to Reed. They can get the game down to under a minute to go in the first half if they want to use the shot clock. 14 on the shot clock. They'll bounce at the clock right block. She's cut off on the double team. Finds Reed on the perimeter. Stops to the lane and Hearn strips it out of her hands. Now Hearn trying to make the turn. Slips. And the whistle. The ball's going to go to Memphis. That's going to be the first called on Tiana Reed, the son of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Jordan Campbell will come off the floor. Before. It also looks like they're going to get Mariah Turner back in here for the final minute. Hard across midcourt, out to the right side, gives to Rouser. Well, a bucket here and a defensive stop would give Memphis something going to the locker room. 
Won't get the bucket. The jumper short by Hearn, rebounded by Turner. Memphis will get one more possession, at least if you do the math off the shot clock. Free throw line, Turner leans in high off the glass, couldn't get it to go. Taylor Williams had it, just couldn't control it, lost momentum, goes out of bounds as she goes sliding toward the entrance here at the Elmo Field Fieldhouse. No change of possession there, so you've got 29.7 on the clock, 17 on the shot clock, actually just a shade, a fraction under 17 on the shot clock. As Reed will switch up with Ashley Clark here for the corner inbounds. Elmore checks in for Memphis in place of Williams. And here is Reed for Tulsa. Reed looks over the offense. They kind of flatten it down low. Give it back to Webster with 10 on the shot clock. Feeding the post. They overshot Turner, but she gets it back into the corner to Hughes. Hughes stops. Tried to thread the needle. Turns it over. 13 left in the half here for Memphis. So across midcourt, down to seven for Hearn. Hearn to the free throw line with five. It's going to be short, rebounded by Tulsa. Reed will give it the old heave-ho at midcourt and almost in at the buzzer. And so the teams went back and forth early in the half, but Tulsa started to gain control, and they have put the clamps down on Memphis. They've held the Tigers at 10 of 30 from the field. Memphis, Fort, or Tulsa, 14 of 27 from the field. We are at the half at the Elmer Field Fieldhouse. Tulsa leads Memphis 36-26. Stay tuned. Haley Otten will take us through the half here at the Elmer Field Fieldhouse on the American Digital Network. Thanks for tuning into Halftime here on the American Digital Network. I'm Haley Outen. We are finally in the last week of the women's basketball regular season, each team trying to finish out strong, heading into the American Championship Tournament. Of course, an automatic bid to the NCAA Tournament is on the line, so it's important to be playing your best now more than ever. Some players that are playing their best are the American Players of the Week. UConn forward Brianna Stewart took home Player of the Week honors after another 2-0 week for the Huskies. The 6'4 junior averaged 27 points, 7 rebounds, and 4.5 and blocks per game while shooting over 70% from the field. What's even more impressive is that Stewart accumulated those averages after only playing about 26 minutes per contest. She put up 26 points against Houston and then followed that up with a season-high 28 points in a win at Tulsa, 23 of which came during the first half. USF is sitting in that number two spot behind UConn in the league standings and has quite a bit of talent as well. The freshman of the week, Laura Ferreira, recorded her first career double-double against Tulsa, scoring 11 points and grabbing 11 rebounds before tallying a career-best 17 points in a win over Temple. With the win against the Owls, the Bulls have clinched a top-two seed in the upcoming conference championship tournament. Coming up, we have something fun for you. I had a chance to head out to Temple last week and got to meet a very special member of the Owls family. She's an actual owl herself. We take you to the Leah Chorus Center, up next. where the Owls are one of four schools in the conference that actually have a live mascot in attendance at many of their home games. Stella the Owl is a newer addition to the family and began her game day presence in 2013. Stella is almost nine years old. She was from the wild, but she was taken in as um, somebody's dog found her, and she's been raised by humans her whole life, and we have a lot of fun at the games, and so does she. Stella lives in a safe and happy environment, but can only be visited in one place. She lives at Elmwood Park Zoo. Um, she is behind the scenes, so if you go to the zoo, you wouldn't be able to see her. You'd have to come out to a temple event to actually see her. 
One little owl has about 43,000 people on campus that have her back. The fans love her, um, and we really appreciate it. They really look out for her, and they know if she's in a situation that we're uncomfortable with or she's uncomfortable with, the fans will step everybody back, so they're really awesome. Stella the Owl might be small, sitting at two feet tall and just three pounds, but she has a mighty big presence on game day. For the American Digital Network, I'm Haley Outen. UConn women's basketball is heading into the final stretch of what could be another very promising season. Although last year's perfect season of going undefeated to win the national championship can't be topped on paper, the end result can still be the same. The Huskies are seeking their 10th national championship, and with the loss of a couple key players from last year's historic team, the torch has been passed on to leaders like Brianna Stewart. Stewart was named the Americans' preseason player of the year and has been living up to the preseason honors. Um, well, to be named preseason player of the year, it's, a, it's definitely an honor, you know, to be looked at as, as that type of person in this conference. And, you know, you take it all in stride, but at the same time, it's preseason. So it doesn't mean a whole, a whole lot unless you actually fulfill it. In order for Brianna to fulfill her hopes for this season, she knows she has to keep improving her game. Well, going into this offseason, the, the thing that I really wanted to get better at was, was being more comfortable with the, the ball on the perimeter. Um, having, you know, being comfortable dribbling it, that kind of thing, being able to take my defender one-on-one -on -one, or even coming off of ball screens. Things that Brianna has to do are going to be hard to do. You know, she wants to get bigger, she wants to get stronger, she wants to be able to do the things that she struggles with. The only problem is her body type not going to allow her to get that much bigger, that much stronger. So she's got to get smarter all the time. And that's something that we talk about and work on every day. Um, she's become better at handling the ball, you know, and uh, uh, that's become evident watching her in practice a little bit. But every great player has to find little things that they want to get better at. And every day something will come up that reminds her, oh boy, i got to work on that. And luckily for her, she loves the game and she'll work at it. Working on her own game is only one piece of the puzzle. Brianna knows that in order to hold that trophy above her head in Tampa this season, she needs to be that leader on and off the court. Well, I think obviously we lost Bria and Steph last year, and those were huge leaders. But the fact that you know we have a lot of upperclassmen with a lot of experience with winning national championships and having success, and I think that you know the biggest thing is just just being a leader, and I think that's what I what I want to do more on this team. The upperclassmen do have experience winning national championships, in fact, two of them, and they'll look to make it three in a row in March. Well, I think our mindset going into this season is, you know, last year was great, but, you know, this year it's a new year, it's a new team, so you can't, you know, you, things have to change, you know, there's new players, new roles, that kind of thing, so you can't, you know, compare it to last year's team. But at the same time at Connecticut, our goal every year is a national championship, and that's what we're going to try to work for day in and day out. The Huskies know that working day in and day out to make the Final Four is definitely worth it, because the memory of being a champion never fades. I think looking back on, on winning a national championship, it's you know it's one of the best feelings you've ever had. Just the, the kind of uh, feeling of accomplishment that you have after you know working so hard all season and then finally you know, reaching your goals and, and not only doing that, but going undefeated like we did last year. There are a few players on the team that don't have memories of winning a national championship, and those, of course, are the freshmen. Newcomers like Kia Nurse and Gabby Williams have already made an impact on this UConn team. But from experience, Brianna knows how much you learn about yourself that first year. I think the biggest obstacle I've had to overcome as a player was, you know, when I was a freshman, realizing that you know, me thinking I'm working hard was not actually working as hard as I possibly could. And, you know, the coaches helped, helped make me realize that. And once I was able to, you know, once I step on the court, I'm working as hard as I possibly can and getting better at something. Uh, things started, you know, going up from there. I think she's got a better sense 
of um, what she can do and what she can't do. Because I think when you come in as a really talented freshman, you're not quite sure. Uh, everybody's telling you how good you are, but you think you're good, but you're not sure because some of the things you try to do in practice don't necessarily go so well. Um, so I think over a period of time and then the success that she's had, uh, especially in the NCAA tournament both years, it's a lot more confident, um, a lot more aware of her surroundings, you know, where she is on the floor. Um, and, and I think that's, that's a big part of anybody's success is how confident they are. So I, I just think she was confident coming in, but her confidence has just grown tremendously. Brianna's confidence in herself and this team has carried over from last season. She knows it's a new season, but has no doubt that the expectations are anything short of last year's accomplishments. Well, I think, you know, what people need to know about this year's team is that we have new faces, but at the same time, our goal is still the same, and, you know, we're, we're going to work as hard as we've been working, or as hard as any other UConn team has worked when they go through this program. You know, we're so competitive in everything we do, and that's, that's the best part about basketball is the competitive nature that you have, and, you know, we win, so that's nice too. The Huskies will look to keep the W's coming as they close out the regular season and start getting ready for their NCAA tournament run. UConn's only loss came to Stanford back in the beginning of the season, but they rebounded with a notable win over Notre Dame, and then most recently a win over then number one South Carolina. The 11 other American teams have high hopes of a postseason themselves, and the American Championship Tournament will be extremely vital with an automatic NCAA tournament bid on the line. It's time to get back to the game. The second half is here. Thanks for tuning into the American Digital Network. Enjoy the game. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. There's more to a university than its name, something not found in any book or catalog. It's a certain beat, a signature rhythm not seen or heard but felt. From moments of illumination to those of discovery. From the world's smallest stage to the biggest. At the University of Memphis, we've found a beat all our own. Find yours. 36-26, Tulsa leading the Memphis Tigers here in the Elmeron Fieldhouse at the half of this evening's game. Again, a very key game for both teams. Memphis at 13-13. and Pretty much a must win for the Tigers if they want to have any chance at postseason play, whether it's the WNIT, the WBI. Could win the tournament for the NCAA. Tulsa in a little bit better shape. And early on, the Memphis Tigers from Ariel Hearn right there. And Ariel Hearn has already scored double digits. Gets it out to Mariah Rouser. And Hearn again from the left wing. And we see Hearn in transition this time, leaning in to get the floater to go. And Hearn had Memphis in the game as Taylor Williams from the right wing. But then Tulsa began to take control of the ball game. Their defense clamped down as you see Rouser. Now, if they can get Rouser going in the second half, they can jump back into this ball game. There's the freshman Creighton again, and it's Williams off the elbow. And here's where Tulsa got things going in transition. It's Reed in the open court off the steal and the layup. She just doesn't get out in transition. She distributes the basketball very well. As you see it out to Kelsey Grovey, who drains the three from the corner. And again, they'll get Turner and Bond again back in on the move. Erica Wakefield. And Tulsa's just had a nice in-and-out game here tonight. They've got Memphis in the post. They go back outside at Webster. And Tulsa works the perimeter again, a three-pointer straight away. And the Golden Hurricane have been able to control the game for about the first 12 minutes of the first half. And the Tigers got to get something going on offense. They're just two of their last 11. They've done well holding Tulsa after Tulsa got that lead to just one for their last eight from the field and the half, but Memphis has got to try to find something on offense to get back into this one. They're down 10 at the half. Again, they lost by 10 on January 10th over at the Don Reynolds Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
Again, seeding on the line as well. Tulsa right now tied for fifth in the league, and a win tonight keeps them in that tie. Uh, but they've got to get the five seed to, again, not play the first day of the conference tournament. That 4-5 game doesn't play till day two. As seed six through 11 will play on day one again. That starts not this coming weekend, but the next weekend up at that great facility up at Mohegan Sun. And that arena, outstanding. They put on a great conference tournament last uh, last year up in Unkinsville. And Memphis looking forward to getting back there. They took an early loss in the first round a year ago to try to go up there and advance this season. It'll be the first trip for Tulsa, their first year in the league. And as we talked about Matilda Bossman's ball club, they were preseason ninth in the league. And they're going to finish likely at least in the top six. They got a chance for fifth, maybe an outside chance for fourth if they finish really strong and get a little help down the stretch. There's Melissa McFerrin with her Tigers trying to rally the troops, trying to get something going again, as we've said, offensively here. And an early start here in the first two to four minutes would be critical for the Memphis Tigers. Coach Boss, what I'm sure telling her team, well, we've got the game right now up by 10. Stay steady. Don't turn the ball over. And you talk about turnovers. Eight on Tulsa, six on Memphis. Tulsa right now, 14 of 27 for the field, four of seven of the arc, four of six of the free throw line. Clark leading the lay with 10 points. Memphis just 10 of 30 from the field, three of eight of the arc, three of four at the free throw line. And Ariel Hearn, they're all conference guard with 10 points, five assists, two rebounds so far in this contest. And Tulsa's got to feel good with the 36 points because their last two games against USF and UConn scored just 46 points in each of those ball games. Now, given you're playing two top 25 teams, a loss on the 18th of February, 79-46 down in Tampa. They hosted UConn Saturday, lost 92-46 to against the top-ranked Huskies. But offensively, they've already got 36, just getting 46 in the last two ball games. So Coach Mossman liking what she's seeing so far and just wants a strong 20 minutes here to finish things off. So it'll be Tulsa basketball or Memphis basketball to start the second half. And both teams look like they saved their original five starters. Ariel Hearn out up top here for the Tigers. Again, they're in the home whites and Tulsa in the road blues. So let's see if Memphis can get something going here on this first possession. A bucket or some kind of points on this first possession would be big for the Tigers. They go to Rouser out into the right corner, moves it back up the wing. Hearn finds just a little bit of room. Lost the basketball, though, and Tiana Reed will pick it up. So not the start they wanted. Let's see what Tulsa can do if they can capitalize on it here as Groby's out up top. Finds Reed. Reed back to the left wing, Brady. Groby has the basketball now, 15 on the shot clock. Memphis forcing the ball outside. Here's Brady again going to the free throw line. They work it to Groby right side, 8 on the shot clock. Baseline and nothing doing that time as Tulsa's going to turn it over and Reed gives it back to the Memphis Tigers. So both teams come away with a turnover on their first possession of the second half. As Ariel Hearn is across midcourt over to Rouser. Williams down the left arc. Memphis has worked the perimeter. They got Fuqua Bay and right. They really need to get those two going down low. They'll go to right this time. Baby hook and there it is. Brianna Wright, her first points of the ball game. She had five rebounds, but she was 0 for 3. So Brianna Wright gets the first bucket of the second half for either team in getting them going. And so Memphis has pulled it within 36-28. Back to the left side now. Right side, jumper for Tulsa is no good. And here come the Tigers, a chance to get out on a 4-0 run. Here's Hearn in transition, dumps it off the Hearn bed, or Fuqua Bay, but Hearn leaning in is going to get whistled for the charge, and that's going to be her second foul of the ball game. So it looks like Memphis had things going there. As Groby got her feet set before Hearn could leave it for Fuqua Bay, just a split second was the difference there. Nice job by Kelsey Grovey to get those feet set. So up high will be Reed. Reed stops just inside the arc. Leaves it up high as Brady saves it from going backcourt. Brady puts on the brakes. Free throw line jumper and a block by Fuqua Baber. They're going to call the foul on the junior out of Chicago, Illinois. That's the third on Fuqua Bay, and that hurts. Fuqua Bay, eight points, nearly seven rebounds a game, has 14 blocks. 
on the honor roll January 12th and a key figure for Memphis. You see Caden Brady go in and Fu Kwa Bay just caught a piece that looked like of the right hand. So here is Brady, 75.6%, and she hits the first. Top 10 all time in field goals made, games played in steals for Tulsa. Played in 90 games coming into the season. And is averaging uh, over 7.5 points, 3 rebounds a game. Second on the way is good, and Tulsa back up 38-28 with under 18 minutes to go in the ball game. Here is Williams, goes high again. So Fuqua Bay staying in the game right now. Baseline jumper, Mariah Rouser. Mariah Rouser pulls Memphis to within eight, and Rouser now three for eight in the ball game. Off to the right side, now cuts back. They'll give it off to Tiana Reed. Reed on the left arc, 17 and a half minutes to go. High again to Brady, matches up, and they may try to attack Fuqua Bay with the three fouls right now. Three from the right side. Groby rolls over the rim. Rouser couldn't control it, and an offensive board by Reed. Fresh 30. They give it to Groby. Comes in, lays it up, and in, and draws the foul, and it's Kelsey Groby. A big play for Tulsa. Back up by 10 with 17.15 to go. Third foul now on Hearn, and that's the one player they can't afford to get in foul trouble early in the second half of Melissa McFerrin pacing the floor by the bench as Kelsey Groby. The 5'8 junior to the free throw line gets the bonus. So Fuqua Bay back over to Hearn to the right wing, lobs it up high to Asia. 41 30. The left corner is Williams on the elbow. Now they'll find Hearn right arc. 13 on the shot clock. Hearn right elbow misses off to the right side, and Tulsa comes away with it again in Grovey. Coming away for the Golden Hurricane. Right wing trying to get some dribble penetration out there. Up high again is Brady. Reverse layup. What a move by the 5'9 senior out of Oklahoma, Caden Brady. Memphis trying to go long. Here's Fuqua Bay forced her way up. And it's going to be Groby. No, it may be going to be Mariah Turner who picks up the foul, her first. So that'll put Fuqua Bay to the line, 70.1%. She's really come on her junior year. First two years right at 55% at the free throw line. But this year hitting a little bit over 70%. In and out, no good. Nice positioning as Fuqua Bay trying to muscle her way up against Kelsey Groby there. As well as Mariah Turner and Fuqua Bay's second goes down. So 43-31. Tulsa with a 12-point lead on the road with 16 and a half to go. Coming across, it's going to be Reed. Careless pass that time, tipped by Williams. Rouser has it. She cannot get her balance, and Reed will get it back. Poked by Fuqua Bay, and finally looks like Reed has control of it. Pass deflected to Grovey. Hearn defends. Back up high. Here's Brady taking off. Cut off by Williams on the block. 18 on the shot clock for the Golden Hurricane. Tulsa moves it all the way to the left corner. Reed again feeds it in. Brady wants the post. There is Hearn. Tips it away, and Turner may draw the foul as Hearn goes down. It's going to be the second on Turner, and that brings us to the under 16-minute media timeout as the Tigers trail at 43-31. Let's take a look at the players of the week, the 6'4 junior from UConn, Brianna Stewart, and the freshman of the week, Laura Ferreira, the 5'11", Ford out of USF, recorded her first career double-double Wednesday night against Tulsa, scoring 11 points, grabbing a career-high 11 rebounds. Also tallied a career-best 17 points in a win over Temple Sunday to go along with seven rebounds. Freshman averaged 14 points, nine rebounds a game in the undefeated week, helped the Bulls clinch a top-two seed in the upcoming conference championship with Sunday's win again. Congratulations to Laura, the reigning freshman of the week in the American and the player of the week, Brianna Stewart, the 6'4 junior from UConn, averaged 27.7 rebounds and four and a half blocks per game, shot 70.6% from the field in a 2 0 week for the Huskies. Stewart accumulated those averages in only 26 and a half minutes a game. Junior started the week with a 26.5 rebound, four assist effort, and UConn's win over Houston Tuesday. 
26 points, came on 11 of 16 shooting and 26 minutes of action against the Cougars. Follow that up with a season high 28 points and a win at Tulsa. 23 of that came during the first half. 13-18 from the field to go along with nine rebounds and six blocks. Congratulations again to Brianna Stewart, the reigning player of the week in the American Athletic Conference. And Tigers trailing here as Memphis got off to a decent start of the second half, trying to get the post and bomb right there. Brianna Wright. Memphis working the perimeter here, and there's Asia Fuquade. Nice dish to a wide open Mariah Rouser along the baseline. But Tulsa would storm back and keep control of the game. Nice pass from Reed. Finds Grovey going down the lane. And now all the way from the far corner, it was Caden Brady went to the near block. Tigers to the ball out of the media timeout with under 16 minutes to go. And Tulsa leading at 43-31. They'll go inside. Here is Fuqua Bay has it. Hang on the back iron and go. And Memphis needed that one. Fuqua Bay playing with three fouls. Hearn on the floor right now playing with three fouls for Memphis as they go to Grovey. Sending it to Hughes. Wants to reverse it out right side as they get Ashley Clark back in the game. Three. Straight away, Kelsey Grovey. As Kelsey Grovey tonight, that's going to be her second three-pointer. She's got 11 points now in 16 minutes. Here's Williams out to the right. Art finds Hearn trying to respond against the Tiger roll. Hit every part of the rim and got a bank off the glass of the all-conference junior. Knocks in the three-pointer. That's her third three of the night. 13 points. That's the first points of the second half for Ariel Hearn. Clark trying to respond at the free throw line. Backs it out with 17 on the shot clock. Nice dish along the baseline to Groby. Groby comes up to Clark again on the elbow. Leans in. Switch hands from the right to the left. Couldn't get the finger roll, but gets the rebound. Never touch rim, so no reset on the shot clock. Down to five. Long range three on line, but a little bit short, and she gets the rebound, her own rebound in the corner. So a fresh 30 down with 14.28 to go in the ball game. Tulsa again leading by 10. They go baseline, tipped away, and it went off of Ashley Clark. Gives it back to the Tigers. Memphis right now is just 13 of 34 from the field, 4 of 9 of the arc. Tulsa is 17 of 34, 4 of 10 at the arc. As they will get Groby off the floor, Memphis will get right off the floor. Creighton's back in, and it looks like Tulsa got Erica Wakefield in. Groby right now having a nice ball game. So here comes Ariel Hearn for Memphis. Nice screen that time by Cheyenne Creighton on the near sideline. Up high again to Fuqua Bay. Feeds it to Hearn, and Hearn had it knocked out of her hands to Fuqua Bay. Asia will drive to the right side, fouled before the shot. Looks like that may be Ashley Clark's foul. It's going to be her second. 13 fouls, so each team with three team fouls in the second half. So it'll be a slide in down for Ariel Hearn as you see Fuquai Bay get tied up the mark right there. 24 of the shot clock, about 14 minutes to go. And the Fuquai Bay strong couldn't go down. Looked off the glass like it was going to go, and then the outlet pass is knocked away and uncontrollable by Reed. And I'll give it back to the Tigers as. Tater Williams will bring it in. Williams, a sophomore to Kansas City, Kansas. Back to Ariel Hearn, who sets the offense between the circles. Rouser to the right side. Rouser stops just inside the arc. A little bit short. Offensive rebound. Fuqua Bay and puts it back. Asia Fuqua Bay now with seven points, two rebounds in the ball game. They look down low, Tulsa does. Nothing there. They'll go up high to Webster. 19 on the shot clock. Webster off the right elbow. Left-handed and jumper, no good. And now Hearn got tied up, went up under Ashley Clark. And if that's Hearn, it's going to be her fourth. And it is. So Melissa McFair in a big decision here at 1321. High ball, and that one got behind Clark and Hearn trying to get down, got up under her, kind of took her legs out from under her. So Hearn is off the floor, and here comes Amber Holmes, and now the freshman out of Memphis Overton High School. 
It's going to be on her shoulders here for a while to run this offense. They'll stack it along the lane as they'll talk on the Tulsa bench about the situation. Right now they've got an eight-point lead with 13.21 to go. Here is Rita on the perimeter. Dead ball goes high to Webster again. Fresh 30 on the clock. Webster off the right side of the arc. Through traffic, it's going to be Grovey. Feeds it inside, deflected away. Now in the lane, nice ball movement. And they find Erica Wakefield. Freshman out of Moore, Oklahoma, and Heritage Hall High School. Again, you just can't stretch, stress enough the ball movement of Tulsa. Really keeps you off balance from the Total Boston's Ball Club. Just really never lets you get comfortable defensively and lets you get set in one of your defensive sets. Here is Rouser into Fuqua Bay, and she's fouled, and she'll go back to the line. Fuqua Bay today, one for two at the free throw line. Nine points and a couple of rebounds for the junior. She heads back to the free throw line. You take a look again, Fuqua Bay goes in, and collision right there for Mariah Turner. Turner now with three fouls for Tulsa as the first free throw rattles around, no good. Memphis four of seven now from the free throw line. So we're going to see a Tor Campbell check in, a sophomore at Topeka, Candace, averaging about a point a rebound and a half. Played in 16 games, sort of one a year ago. Second free throw is good for... Fuqua Bay and Memphis down nine, 48-39. Still a lot of time left in this ball game. 12-39 to go. Ball knocked out of the hands of Wakefield. They'll call it out on Amber Holmes. 23 on the shot clock here for Tulsa. Into the backcourt to reset everything. Wakefield across midcourt out along the left wing. Nothing doing. Into the post, it's Webster. And Memphis back to Rouser right wing. 12-23 remaining. And again, Memphis trailing at 48-39. And Holmes hangs on to it. Freshman bounces it into Fuqua Bay. Elbow jumper from Williams. And Memphis starting to get going. Tulsa with 12 turnovers. Giving Memphis some opportunities. And the Tigers starting to get things going. Only down seven. So roller to Campbell. And her shot blocked by Fuqua Bay. And here come the Tigers. The freshman Holmes may take it all the way. Dumps it off to Rouser, and here comes Memphis. Tigers have pulled it within five, and the Tigers have something going. That gets the crowd into the ball game, and Matilda Mossman calls the timeout. The first call timeout of the half becomes the media timeout, so we'll take the break. 11.47 to go, 48-43 Tulsa, but the Tigers coming on strong on the American Digital Network. There's more to a university than its name, something not found in any book or catalog. It's a certain beat, a signature rhythm not seen or heard but felt. From moments of illumination to those of discovery. From the world's smallest stage to the biggest. At the University of Memphis, we've found a beat all our own. Find yours. Tigers, three of their last three. They're on a run trying to win this important game tonight because you look at the last two games for Memphis. Number one UConn up in Storch, Connecticut, Saturday. Then Monday night, March 2nd, against SMU here at the Elmeron Fieldhouse. There will be no distraction for Memphis on what usually is senior night. There's no seniors on the ball club. But you see right there with UConn and SMU how critical tonight's game is with a 13-13 and -13 record trying to win at least two of your last three ball games, and you get that big challenge Saturday afternoon up in stores against the top ranked Huskies. You see here Tulsa out on the wing. Looking straight away, and the three-pointer by the Golden Hurricane. They'll work the block this time as they go to Turner. Nice job as she finds Erica Wakefield straight away in the lane. Now the Tigers starting to get going. Fuqua Bay to Williams. The elbow jumpers what really got the Tigers some confidence. Amber Holmes in transition. Great feed to Mariah Rousey. That's what made Memphis three of their last three. And they pulled it within five. 48-43. 11-47 to go in this ballgame. Second half, Memphis three of five from the field. Salsa just one of six right now in the second half of play. 
Up high, they'll go to Grovey. Tulsa has the ball out of the immediate timeout left wing to Webster. Matilda Mawson wasn't going to wait for the usual under 12-minute media timeout. She wanted that timeout to stop some momentum. Golden Hurricane out to the right wing, comes off a screen. Dead ball on the elbow, feeds it high again to Reed. Three on the shot clock. Reed cuts baseline and looks like she draws the foul on Amber Holmes. A one on the shot clock. Holmes a little slow to get up. Holmes will pick up her second 15 foul, and that'll get us to the regular under 12 minute media timeout. It should, as they'll go check on Amber Hall. She went down hard there. I think she's more frustrated than anything else as Reed makes the turn along the baseline. Oh, that's where you see uh, she got tripped up by her own point, ran right into Fuqua Bay, and went down hard. But we've come to the regular under 12 minute media timeout. 11.23 to go in the game. Tulsa leads at 48 43 on the American Digital Network. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. Well, Tulsa sits at 14 and 12 on the year, and they would like a strong finish as well to help secure some postseason. They've got a pretty good challenge coming up Saturday as well. They're going to host the Tulane Green Wave, which is one of the three teams in the league vying for a potential at-large berth. Then they'll finish the season up when they go up to Cincinnati, Cincinnati 3 and 12 in the league, but they're vying maybe to move up in the seating. UCF leads Cincinnati by just a game. So a matchup with Tulane this weekend, who right now has a number three seed in Tulsa. Still mathematically could finish as high as the three seed. So we'll see if they pull out the win here. It's going to be a big game of Tulane. Here's the Memphis huddle. Looks like Amber Holmes is okay and she'll stay in the ball game. Went down hard. Uh, on defense, ran into her own teammate, and Holmes will stay out. And there's the mighty sound of the South, the band for Memphis here at every ball game, and a fan favorite, Melissa McFerrin, a big fan of that mighty sound of the South. Tulsa has it along the baseline. They're going to have the fresh 30, 11 23, and Memphis, great job on defense as they force the five second violation. And that's going to be the 13th turnover now by Tulsa. Tigers have scored eight points off the first 12 turnovers as Tulsa making a move as they are going to get Ashley Clark and Mariah Turner back in. Clark's been the catalyst with 10 points. Groby actually leads Tulsa, though, with 11. Right side is Holmes. Holmes stops the Rouser left arc. 17 on the shot clock. Memphis can make it a one-possession ball game here. Into Creighton, turns with the left hand, and there it is. Cheyenne Creighton, the freshman out of Ontario, and she was on the honor roll this week, pulls Memphis to within a possession. 48-45 Tulsa. Tigers a 7-0 run over the last minute, 42 seconds. Spin move, finger roll no good. Creighton and Fuqua Bay there. And they're going to get Fuqua Bay or fourth. Hearns off the floor with four now. Fuqua Bay with four. Two of their biggest players now with four fouls of 10.46 to go. And Brianna Wright's at the scores table to check in after this first free throw from Ashley Clark. Clark right now, 67.4% from the free throw line. It's also seven of nine as you see her on the spin move. Leans in. There it was a foul as Fuqua Bay just got her on the hip. Nothing on the arm, but the contact made on the body. So there goes Fuqua Bay with their 10 points, three rebounds off the floor. Hearn on the bench now, 13 points and four rebounds. And two of the primary players for Melissa McFerrin off the floor here for a while. Second free throw rolls over and no good. So a 49-45 ball game. Tulsa up by four, trying to get a big road win, but Memphis trying to defend the home court. Holmes on the right sideline, the freshman. 
So a couple of freshmen in there right now, true freshmen in Holmes and Creighton. Along with a redshirt sophomore and two juniors in Holmes. Had the seam. Couldn't handle the basketball as it rolls off her leg and out of bounds. The Tigers will turn it over. The ninth time in this ball game has led to nine turnovers. The tenth time, actually, but has led to nine turnovers for Tulsa. Now a bounce pass off to the left wing. Coming across the top is Clark. Finds some room. Runs in the right. Pulls back. Jumper no good. And it's going to be Rouser with the rebound. Amber Holmes down the left side as Holmes stops, gives it to Williams. Williams dead ball, looking for Holmes out to the left sideline. 16 on the shot clock, they'll go back to Taylor Williams. Six points in the game, Williams is three for six. Right arc and the three-pointer looked like it may have been partially blocked that time by Ashley Clark. Razzler looked open at first, but Ashley Clark, I believe, may have gotten a piece of that one. All right, they're going to call Memphis basketball, so they do say there's contact made, so Clark did get a piece of it. <laughs> Memphis for the last five. We look at the replay right there and just grazed her fingertips. Great job by our staff here on the American Digital and our camera operators to catch that. Here is Rouser out on the far sideline. Williams nearly had the ball stolen by Reed. Knocks it out of bounds of 9.41 remaining. Four on the shot clock for the Tigers. Into Holmes with three. Holmes jump stop. The elbow leans in. No good. That's going to be out on Williams racing in there to try to grab the rebound. Memphis for the last six now from the field. So under 10 minutes to go now. Time going to start to go pretty quickly for these two ball clubs. It's also a chance to move it back up to the big two possession lead. Chance to go up six, maybe even three possessions at seven. Bounce pass. Good job by Clark to catch up with that one on the baseline. Trying to power away up. Creighton with the block, force of the jump ball. Possession stays with Tulsa. 9.22 to go. Tulsa will get a chance. It'll stay at 17 as you see her break baseline. And there is Creighton with the right hand. Gets the block, force of the jump ball. Grovey. Bounce pass on the block, under the legs. Brianna Wright trying to force the jump ball. Well, it looks like Tulsa gained possession with Mariah Turner and got the 30-second timeout. Tulsa now 0 for the last four with 9-16 remaining in the ball game. Tulsa built up some pretty impressive leads, but Melissa McFerrin got her team to rally. Tulsa in this ball game is led by as much as 14, but Memphis closed it bravely to a two-point deficit, currently sitting down by four at 49. To 45 here. Again, with 9 16 remaining, Tulsa's going to have 11 on the shot clock coming out of this timeout. Tulsa down to the last two timeouts. Tigers will have three. Possession arrow favoring the Tigers. We take a look. Going inside that pass a little bit low, but Turner able to get it before Wright was able to grab a jump ball and Turner gets a quick timeout. Nine on the shot clock. They'll break baseline. They got around the freshman that time, and it's going to be Clark, I believe, that got the bucket that time for Tulsa. And Tulsa now back up. The long two possession lead of six. Williams' right arc goes free throw line. Sends it out to Rouser. Left wing. And to right back up high. Here is Williams. Directs traffic. She'll send the freshman Holmes down into the corner. Williams stops. Amber Holmes on the right arc. Eight on the shot clock. Holmes dead ball. Soft pass, and it's going to be picked off. Deflected by Reed, and she'll get it back. Bounce pass to Clark, in and out of her hand, saves it, and Tulsa's going to have it. Brady at the free throw line got it. So Groby sets the offense with eight and a half to go in the ball game. Left wing is Brady. Bounce pass onto the post, up and in and out that time. Looked like it was going to go down for Turner. Would not fall, and Holmes will have it. Off the rebound by Brianna Wright. 8.16 to go, and Wright has it up between the circles. Stops, finds Rouser along the left wing. 15 on the shot clock. Back to Rouser in the corner. Rouser up to Williams. And again, Fuqua Bay and Hearn on the bench, but they're at the scores table. And there it is. Taylor Williams pulls Memphis back to within four with eight minutes to go. So we'll see. Two of their key players coming back in for the Tigers after the break. It'll be Ariel Hearn and Fuqua Bay. 
7.44 to go at Tulsa. Got a lot of fight left in them there. As they'll move it back up to six again, 53-47. Memphis, five of their last seven on offense. Creighton tried to go in. It was tipped, and here is Rouser out of nowhere to pick up the loose ball and get the bucket. Memphis back to within four. 53-49, Tulsa. Reed to the right sideline. Hands it over to Grovey with 7.17 to go. Right corner, Reed looks into the post out there. Clark thought about the three. Got Creighton in the air just enough to take off down the lane and get the nice layup. Clark now with 15.6 rebounds. They'll go to right. Right got around the defense. Rattles it in as it hangs off the back iron. So now these two teams with so much on the line going back and forth with under seven minutes remaining. Reed on the sideline between the circles, defended by the freshman. Back out to the right wing. They think about the three. Nothing there for Brady. Now she's going to take it. Shoots it short. Offensive rebound. Reverse layup. Not going to go. Right tips it to Holmes of six and a half minutes to go. Tigers can get to within a possession this time, but Holmes trying to scoop it. Has it taken away. Grovey is fouled from behind by Williams. And Williams will pick up her first. And that gets us to the under eight minute media timeout. 6.53 to go in Memphis. Tulsa up 55-51 on the American Digital Network. Well, just one weekend and a Monday night left in the American. We've got some exciting action coming up and some big games. Tomorrow night, Temple goes to Moody Coliseum in Dallas, Texas to face SMU. Temple trying to stay in that top five. SMU battling for some seating. Cincinnati then goes to SMU this weekend. And the Bearcats and SMU just one game apart in ninth and tenth place in the league. Then a couple of Monday night matchups, UCF goes up the road to Greenville and Menchie's Coliseum as the Knights will take on ECU. Currently sits in fourth place at 10 and 6. UCF trying to hang on to that eighth seed. And then the other Monday night game, Temple at Houston. And as we told you, Temple trying to stay in the top five in Houston, trying to get some momentum before they head up to the Sun in the conference tournament. There is that ball tip as they're trying to hit to Brianna Wright and the nice hustle by Mariah Rouser to get in and get the bucket. And now there's Clark. Got Creighton in the air just enough to get that layup. Breaks baseline there and another nice move. On the perimeter, they'll attack the post again. Down low to Tulsa and it's Mariah Turner with eight points, five rebounds. And Matilda Mossman smiling with a lead on the road and hoping to finish it off and some very concerned looking Tiger fans in the stands right now. 6.23 remaining and that'll put Groby to the line. Groby 11 points tonight. Had the 19.6 rebound game against the Tigers on January 10th. The left-hander gets it to go. Now two for two at the free throw line. And that's where the foul came and they got her hard. Taylor Williams over that right shoulder. That was just the first on Williams. By the way, that foul on Williams put Tulsa in the bonus for the rest of the game. Tulsa only four fouls in the second half, so Memphis still three away from getting in the bonus. And key here, you have got Hearn with the basketball right there, who wears number four, and Fuqua Bay about to provide the screen, number 21. Both with four fouls back in the game. Hearn to the left wing. She stops, calls for some help. No one getting open. There's Fuqua Bay back to Hearn with eight on the shot clock. Her needs the screen. No, long range three, and it's good. The all-conference guard out of Memphis, Tennessee, stepping up big. Fifth in the league in scoring. She's got 16 points tonight. And this is the area where an Ariel Hearn will take over a ball game. We'll see if Tulsa's able to contain her. But Tulsa's got some good players of their own. Reed gives it to one of their best, Ashley Clark. Clark, a great feed, and that's why she can respond. Right down low to Caden Brady, but a great feed up high by Ashley Clark. 
Hearn wants to return it. Couldn't get the layup. Groby with the rebound. Outlet pass. Reed finds Brady. Was going to go up for the shot. Just lost a handle on the basketball. Leaves the door open for Memphis to pull back to within a possession. 5.18 to go. Now Hearn looks over to head coach Melissa McFerrin. You hear that familiar whistle over there. Yeah, that usually slams on the brakes to call the play as Hearn hesitates. Goes into the corner. Rouser couldn't knock down the three, and it's going to be Tiana Reed with the rebound. Reed with a five-point lead in and out of her hands, able to punch it over to Brady. Brady reverses direction. Now let's see how much clock Tulsa wants to start using. He got a five-point lead, trying to stretch it to seven, maybe eight. Spin move, but couldn't get the layup or the rebound. It's going to be off of Ashley Clark. So you've got Clark with 15 points, six boards for Tulsa, and for the Tigers, Hearn with 16 points, six assists, and four rebounds. Just over four and a half remaining. And again, a five-point lead for Tulsa. Tigers get it to Hearn for three off the front of the rim. Would not take the Tiger roll. Tulsa again comes away with it. So the Tigers have tried a three in the last two possessions. They've missed both. Groby down the lane. Lays it up on the glass. Not going to go. Wright has it. Now Hearn wants to push the pace. Hearn splits the defense. Kicks it out to Rouser. And it's no good. Rattles in and out. We have a pushing foul. Going to be the second one called against Tiana Reed. That'll put Rouser to the free throw line. 78.5% at the line there for Rouser. Played a handful of games her freshman year before she was injured. Last year, a redshirt freshman made all conference, all freshman team in the American. 31 games, had 21 starts last year. Averaged a little over eight points a game. Has made the honor roll already uh, this season back on November 17th. Averaging nearly 10 points a game, a little over three rebounds. Has picked up 20 steals for Melissa McFerrin's Tigers. Two for two trip. That was big for Memphis. They pulled it within a possession. And only one more media timeout left here in the ball game. It'll be coming up once we get under four minutes. So a big time for Memphis to get to within a possession. But Tulsa trying to stretch it out to two possessions. They go down low. Travel that time, Caden Brady got tied up with Taylor Williams, and that'll get us to the last media timeout. 3.58 to go. Tulsa up 59-56 at Memphis on the American Digital Network. University of Tulsa, a nationally ranked private university. There's more to a university than its name, something not found in any book or catalog. It's a certain beat, a signature rhythm not seen or heard but felt. From moments of illumination to those of discovery. From the world's smallest stage to the biggest. At the University of Memphis, we found a beat all our own. Find yours. This live broadcast brought to you by Live U Sports, the leader in turnkey live video production for sports, powering digital sports networks, live game production and transmission. For more information, visit Live U Sports at liveu.tv. Good one here in Memphis. Tulsa threatened to run away early, but the Tigers clawed their way back. In part by Ariel Hearn, the all-conference guard out of Memphis, straightening the three-pointer right there, and she's doing it now, playing with four fouls. It also returns the favor, and a nice bucket that time by Keenan Brady going down the right side of the lane. So again, Memphis with two players of four fouls in the game right now. Fuqua Bay and Hearn. As you look down the Memphis bench, and there's Fuqua Bay about to bring it into Hearn. Those are the two players of four fouls. Hearn with 16 points, Fuqua Bay with 10. It's also going to apply a little pressure at half court. They get it over to Williams, back to Hearn, right wing. Memphis could potentially get this game tied up on this possession. 
Here is Rouser, steps inside the arc, knocks it down. It's a one-point game. The red shirt sophomore out of Rockville, Maryland. Over to Groby, left arc. Three and a half remaining. Right arc now. Tulsa gets it up high. They'll find Hughes. Left wing to Reed. Diving down the lane, and it's going to be Clark who had it knocked off her leg. So Memphis down by one can grab the lead on this possession. It's also one of the last five, not including that turnover there. Three turnovers the last 2-12 for the Golden Hurricane. Here's Hearn. Kicks it out to Williams. Dead ball inside the arc finds Hearn. Hearn stops into Brianna Wright. Backing her way down. Nice drop step. Way up Memphis leads Brianna Wright. Tigers with a 60-59 lead with under three minutes remaining. To the left wing is Clark. Clark gets it to Turner and Tulsa responds. Mariah Turner out of Norman, Oklahoma. So shaving up to be a good 241 remaining in this ball game as these two teams exchanging blows down the stretch. Into right on the block. Double team. Finds Fuqua Bay. Leans in, rolls it over and in. Fuqua Bay with 12 points. Tigers up by one. Out to the right side. And these are two teams. And you can tell the sense of urgency playing for a chance at postseason play. There is Hearn to the far sideline. Melissa McFerrin slows her down. Getting the play call. This game nearing the two-minute mark. Hearn between the circles over to Rouser. They'll feed Fuqua Bay. Dropped it down to the double team. Lost the basketball. We get a jump ball. It will be in possession. Favors the Tigers. 154 to go. Tulsa making a move. It looks like he's coming off the floor and Brady going in. That ball knocked away from Fuqua Bay. Loose on the floor, but credit Fuqua Bay battling Clark. To force the jump ball and keep possession. So it looks like Memphis, the officials will get together just to clarify everything. And it'll be a baseline inbound. 11 on the shot clock for the Tigers. In motion out to right. Just inside the arc, gets it back to Hearn. Down to seven on the shot clock. Hearn's going to get some spacing near midcourt. Down to three. Hearn, long range three. High off the back iron. And it's going to go off of, they're going to say Rouser. And that'll give it to... Tulsa, so Tulsa with a minute 41 to go. Tulsa down 62-61 at Memphis. Reed to the right side. Reed hanging on to it, backs it up to midcourt. Moves it to Clark left side, matches up with Williams. Looks it to the left side, it's tipped by Fuqua Bay. She wanted Mariah Turner. They'll have 13 on the shot clock with a minute 24 to go. Right now, Clark and Groby with a hot hand, 15 and 13 for each of those players. And they find Groby had a muscle her way through the pile. Brady with 10, backs her way along the free throw line. Stops, gives it to Clark. She spins in and out of trouble to Groby. Thought about the three. Two on the shot clock, leans in from the free throw line. In and out, no good. Williams got tied up down low with Turner. And Williams goes down hard along with Brianna Wright. And the foul will be a hold, it looks like, on Taylor Williams. We see right here. Yeah, she got over her left shoulder, got around the, the head, nearly a headlock there, unintentional by Williams. It went down and depends on what they call this offensive or defensive foul. And it is foul on... Williams, who so will put Tulsa to the line. Tulsa, two of the last six or eight offensively need to make some points here at the free throw line. And here is Turner, 66.1%. Gets the front end, earns the bonus. Again, can just see her get tied up there. Got around the neck that time going for the basketball. 
Second and a two for two trip. 63 62 Tulsa, 110 to go. Tulsa 12 of 15 from the free throw line, 5 of 6 in the second half. And Melissa McFerrin wants the timeout with 104 remaining. So there'll be three timeouts left for Memphis, two for Tulsa going down the stretch. Tulsa has the possession arrow, and they are in the bonus. Memphis still has to get two more fouls from Tulsa to get in the bonus here down the stretch of 104 remaining. Memphis 25 of 54 from the field, 5 of 14 of the arc, 7 of 10 of the free throw line. Tulsa 23 of 54, 5 of 13 of the arc, 12 of 15 at the free throw line. It's Matilda Mossman trying to will her team here down the stretch, and they got the one-point lead as Matilda Mossman talking right there with Turner, who's back in with 12 points and six rebounds. Melissa McFerrin has seen her team battle back, talking things over right there with Asia Fuqua Bay, who's had a nice second half, 12 points, three rebounds despite getting in foul trouble. She and Ariel Hearn come on strong here down the stretch. So into Hearn. Hearn at the center circle with one minute remaining. Here's Hearn to the left arc. It's also again with the lead. Here's Hearn leans in a little bit short, and it's going to be Tulsa with the rebound outside to Reed. Reed's going to push it. Oh, Reed a little indecisive. Wanted to go up for the shot and decided to try to dish it outside and took that little stutter step. And that leaves the door open for the Tigers with 49.1 to go. So Hearn will jog it across midcourt. 44 seconds left. Oh, and she got tripped up right there, it looks like, by Reed. That's going to be her third. 16 fouls. So the Tigers won away from the bonus. That'll put a fresh 30. So 13 second differential between the 43 seconds left in the game. And the 30 on the shot clock. Memphis down 63-62. The Tigers with the basketball in the home white uniforms. So is Hearn backing it up. 21 on the shot clock over to Rouser now. Hearn has it again. Over toward the Memphis bench. She'll take off toward the baseline and lost the basketball. So the shot clock's off with 27.1 seconds to go. And it looks like Matilda Mossman wants the timeout. So now we'll see how this plays out. Here is Hearn. And just lost the basketball. Looks like she had the angle. And was going to start to go up for the shot. Just lost the handle on it. 13 turnovers for the Tigers. 17 right now. As there is Ariel Hearn, number four in the white jersey. Still a chance to make the big play here. But they're going to need something on defense. And I'm sure that's what Matilda Mossman is telling Tulsa right there in the huddle. Now the discussion right now for Melissa McFerrin in the Tiger huddle is how long do you play defense, look for the turnover before you make that foul. Tulsa now has six fouls, so the next foul is going to put Tulsa to the free throw line and stop the clock. So will you be able to get a quick turnover or will you not? But at some point, you got to get that clock stopped. Tulsa does not have to shoot the ball. The shot clock is off of 27 point left. And again, the Tiger fans there in the stands looking on intently. Everyone with their own strategy in the stands. What would you do? You make the call as it was back in the old the 1980s Monday Night Football, the little promo. So we'll see what happens here on the inbound. They've got to go the full length of the floor on the inbound. Memphis is going to put Brianna Wright on the inbound. It looks like Caden Brady is going to bring it in for Tulsa. Man-man coverage here. And they'll break free and get it to Reed. Reed down the near sideline. Goes long to Groby. Nearly out of bounds, but Groby catches up with it. They've got her trapped in the near corner. And they're going to foul with 19 seconds to go. So Rouser picks up her first. So Memphis goes for the steal, trying to force the turnover. But did a nice job of getting the quick foul, not allowing too much time to go off the clock. Now it's going to be up to Kelsey Grove to knock down the free throws. She shoots 83%. Three of three tonight, and now three of four. Just rolled off, and Memphis has a chance now to win it. 
They trail by one at 12 seconds to go. They go to Melissa McFerrin. They call the timeout. Memphis will have two timeouts to go. Well, the obvious choice to get the ball would be Ariel Hearn, 16 points. She's your all-conference player. Earlier this year in a game with East Carolina, though, they found Brianna Wright trailing by two, and Wright was able to get to the free throw line and hit two free throws. Rouser, though, 7 of 15 from the field. She's hit one of the threes. Memphis doesn't need a three. But really, the two wild cards in the situation, you're trailing by one. Can you get it to one of your post players? Fuqua Bay would be the one to think of. 12 points, three rebounds. But Fuqua Bay, and the reason is, is she is on the season from the free throw line, 70.1%. Two of four tonight. Brianna Wright's not gone to the free throw line, but Brianna Wright just a 46.4% free throw shooter. And Taylor Williams, the wild card as well, quietly with eight points, shooting over 50% tonight, four of seven from the arc. As Matilda Mossman there going over all the scenarios for their Golden Hurricane defense. Now it's going to come down to this as Fuqua Bay will inbound it right in front of the Tiger bench. Tigers go in motion. They find right in the corner. Down to eight. They'll get it to Hearn. Fades away, and it's going to be short. Tulsa with the rebound. In the corner and the foul, and Hearn will foul out. You can tell the frustration on Ariel Hearn's face there. Had to foul. She had no choice, so that's going to do it for Hearn. And with 2.4 seconds to go, Tulsa, some fairly big free throws here. If you hit both, then the worst thing that could happen would be overtime, and it would take a long-range three for Memphis. So Amber Holmes comes in as Ariel Hearn will leave the game. 16 points, five rebounds, six assists tonight for the all-conference junior, who was 5 of 17 from the field, 4 of 8 of the arc, 2 of 2 at the free throw line. And now timeout called. So Amber Holmes will come into the ball game. So Tulsa, who is 12 of 16 tonight, from the free throw line and five of seven in the second half. We'll go to the line. Up by one, 63-62. Tilda Mossman dressing the situation here. And she's 2.4 seconds away from going to 15 and 12, 10 and 6 in the league, and firming up a chance at some postseason play. Memphis, if they don't pull something out at 2.4, will fall to 13 and 14. And your two games left are number one UConn and SMU. You gotta go to UConn Saturday at stores. First on the way is good, so a two-point lead. Ashley Clark. Have been so big for Tulsa. Second is good. So Memphis got to find a way to get down the floor. And Melissa McFerrin wants the timeout. Didn't like what she saw on that one. They're going to set up something. Someone's got to come around for the inbound, have momentum going toward the bucket. 2.4, you've got time to get it down the floor, but you've got to have your momentum coming down the court. You can't be going back for the basketball. And that's what Melissa McFerrin, I think, saw there. Amber Holmes is the only Tiger, and she was moving away from the Tiger bucket. But if you can get it in the open court, your momentum going toward the bucket, you can get it across midcourt and, and get right around the three-point arc. Now, you've got to shoot a three, but you've got to get in that area between the arc and midcourt. Tulsa wants Memphis to force a shot shy of midcourt. And this is the scenario. This is why teams that shoot arounds always do the last drill, line up and shoot half-court shots. You see it at almost every shoot around. You rarely need it, but you're glad you did the drill when you do, and Memphis may need it here. They've got Bria Elmore in the ballgame, Rouser and Williams. And they're going to go to midcourt. Williams turns, gets her momentum, shoots it early, and it's going to be short, and that will end the ballgame. 
And Tulsa on the road survives. They had a pretty good lead. Memphis made a run, grabbed the lead late. Tulsa fends off Memphis to win it 65-62. They go to 15 and 12, 10 and 6 in the league. Tigers won a 13 and 14, 7 and 9 in the league. Stay tuned. We will talk to head coach Matilda Mossman and a player of the game, which I will guess would be Ashley Clark. It all comes your way in just a few moments on the American Digital Network. nationally ranked private university. There's more to a university than its name, something not found in any book or catalog. It's a certain beat, a signature rhythm not seen or heard but felt. From moments of illumination to those of discovery. From the world's smallest stage to the biggest. At the University of Memphis, we've found a beat all our own. Find yours. Welcome back to the Elmeron Fieldhouse in Memphis, Tennessee. We're joined by head coach Matilda Mossman of uh, the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Great win, hard fought win. You knew uh, if you got that double digit lead that Memphis wasn't going to just lay down. They had postseason on the line tonight as well. Great ball game to watch. And we knew coming in here it was going to be tough because Memphis has been playing really, really well. You know, they had a chance to beat Tulane at Tulane the other day. So we feel really good to get out, get out of here with a win. You got to admire the composure of your ball club, too. Uh, when Memphis made the run, didn't fold up just steadily went about their business. And even after we gave up the lead, we didn't panic. We, we hung in there, and I'm really really pleased with, with how we did handle that adversity at the end. They gave you a little trouble. You moved the ball around very well. You're second in the league in assists. You're one of the best in the NCAA. They gave you a little trouble. They've got a very good perimeter defense. Well, they're very athletic, and you know they were doing a lot of switching on the perimeter, and we just didn't do a good job of, with our back cuts and things like that. But, uh, you know, we still attacked, and, and th those were the times that we weren't as successful when we didn't attack. So I was pleased with the way we attacked and got to, tried to get to the basket and, and tried to get to the free throw line. In a game like this, you could tell the sense of urgency for both clubs. And the big player stepped up. It was really fun to watch Ashley Clark and Ariel Hearn kind of go back and forth. It was. Uh, you know, Ariel's an outstanding player, and uh, we have great respect for her. But I thought Tiana Reed did a great job. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we were switching off on her, too, on screens. And I thought it was, a, it was an entire team defensive win. Coach, that gets you to 15 wins on the year, 10 and 6 in the league. Still in position to get uh, not have to play on the first day of the conference tournament, get one of the top five seeds. There is a lot on the line tonight, but 15 wins now. you got two challenging games ahead, but you keep yourself in position for postseason play. And that's all we wanted coming out of tonight. Let's, let's continue the position that we're in. Uh, just you know, take care of business tonight, and then we can worry about the next game. Coach, thanks a lot. We want to talk to Ashley here. A great performance, but congratulations great. tonight. Th thank you very much. Matilda Mossman joining us on the postgame show and another outstanding win tonight for Tulsa on the road as we're going to talk to Ashley Clark as she'll make her way over here. And Ashley Clark, 17 points tonight uh, off the bench. And we, we talked to Coach Mossman uh, about that situation, uh, about how you, uh, you guys got together, talked about, hey, uh, I really like coming off the bench. And, and it's, it's, it's come through very well. Seventh in the league in scoring, ninth in rebounding. Is it just give you a chance to kind of uh, scope things out for a few minutes and see how the game's going? Yes. Um, I'm the type of player when I watch other people play, it gets me excited to play. So whether it's the day before a game or the day of the game, while I'm waiting to come in, it gets me more excited and more anxious to get on the court to make something happen. Well, tell me about the 17-point performance tonight and this hard-fought win. You guys got up double digits. Uh, Memphis clawed back. You knew they weren't going to lay down. They had everything on the line just like you guys did tonight, trying to, to, to solidify a, a chance at postseason play. So tell us about your game and, and about this game in general. Well, um, I know my teammates, when I'm on the court, they get better. 
when I don't crash or when I don't look for the ball to score. So I try my hardest to listen to my teammates. And, you know, my coaches were telling me to keep keep going, keep attacking, because that's, you know, most the majority of my game. And we knew that we had to come in here and play better because the last time we played, we, didn't, we feel like we didn't play our better game. Even though the score may not be indicative of how we really played, I think we played harder. And most importantly, whenever they started coming back, um, our coaches and us as a team, we said we need to stay together. We don't need to yell. We don't need to break down. We need to stay together. And I think that was probably the biggest thing that helped us win this game because we stayed together. Well, talking about the difference between the first time you guys played over in Tulsa in early January and now, and I got to see that game, is it seemed like a lot more physical game out here tonight in this one. These, these two teams really scrapping for this win. For sure, but physicality is fun. Yeah. So, I mean, basketball is a finesse sport, contact sport, depending on <laughs> which point of view you have. But it's always fun when you can go in there and, you know, get some contact and finish a shot or get a layup or make the free throw or whichever it is. It's always usually a, it's more fun when it's physical as opposed to just watching. No one really likes watching um, <laughs> just – I don't probably like watching little kids. <laughs> I don't know, but <laughs> it's more fun when it's physical. As we wrap it up, this also keeps you in line for a potential top five in the league, which means you guys won't have to play the first day in the conference tournament. And it's a lot easier only having to play three games than it is having to play four games in four days. So that was key. And you guys got a couple of challenging games uh, coming ahead of you to end the regular season. You're going to start it off uh, with the Tulane Green Wave. Yes, um, as a team, we're very excited to play Tulane, you know, when we played Tulane, it was probably one of the worst games we've played since I've been at TU in the entire season. So we know we can play a better game of basketball and make the game more competitive for Tulane. And also, you know, we're really excited about being able to compete to get in the top five because we were picked ninth in preseason. Yeah. So, you know, it's exciting for us as a team to know that, you know, we kind of hopefully prove some people wrong in uh, being able to compete for that fifth spot. And, you know, even right now it's told that we may be able to get that third. So... We are trying our hardest to stay on up top and keep changing people's minds. Sounds good. Congratulations. Thank Great you. win. Ashley Clark joining us on the postgame show again. Tulsa, a hard-fought win here tonight in Memphis, Tennessee, as they go on the road and they win this ball game by a final of 65-62. As Memphis and Tulsa, a hard-fought game. Tulsa got up by double digits. Tigers would fight back with Mariah Riles right there, but Tulsa in the end a little too much as they knock off the Tigers 65-62. Tulsa now 15-12 and on the year. They go to 10-6 and in the American Conference. The Tigers drop to 13-14, and 7-9 in the league. That'll wrap things up from Memphis, Tennessee. For everyone involved with the American Digital Network, I'm Jeff Brightwell. Good evening from Memphis, Tennessee.